see now uh, it has keyless and most cars in this segment right they give you a button all right i don't know why they did not color code this because this is the expensive type where you press here to lock your hole here to open so it's like those expensive european marks it's not the uh, cheaper type where it's, a, it's actually a button where you just press the button all right um let's go inside give you have a look at the interior um if the video is shaky i apologize my gimbal really died all right really really died so this is the interior now the biggest difference is of course this thing here the old focus has a lot of buttons very busy everything going on now it's very very clear cut all right you have uh, everything is here basically everything is here Return to the main menu, you go to Ford Sync and everything is here as well. Settings and all that. Very responsive touchscreen. Not very glamour in terms of its interface design, but it's very usable. Very responsive and um, high resolution, uh, very fast graphics. So we appreciate that a lot, alright? Oh, Maps is actually that. Alright, so yeah, you can use your Apple Maps. Apple Maps has improved by a lot if you haven't been trying it, alright? Uh, here largely remains the same. I really like this small little screen here because it's very high res and it gives you all the information you need. Alright, and then uh, the way it functions is very user friendly as well. You operate everything with this, which, whichever direction is indicated, and you just press next. Very user friendly. Alright, so um, what else is different? Um, I've mentioned the pedal shifters, you, have, you get uh, dual zone climate control. The specs are actually really good and in terms of build quality, right, you have really nice touch points. They feel really great, especially the steering wheel is so nice to hold. Sitting position is excellent, uh, visibility is excellent, there are no visible blind spots in this car. Um, everything feels alright, you know, high quality and all that. All right, you get the sunglass holders, rubberized inside. So it's decent, you get a nice uh, glove box, roomy, very nice door bins, uh, the way that it's, it's sized, it's not full length, but then um, it's nice for bottles and all that, okay? The push start button is here, and now they change the uh, handbrake lever from here to here, which I don't really appreciate actually when it's here, you get a larger compartment here, but now, now that it's here, um, this is smaller. But this is very very nice, variable, okay? And you can shift this thing up and it's deeper. So it's a it's a very nice thing. It's well thought out, I would say. Alright. Um is this can I open this? Why couldn't I open this? Hmm. Oh, okay. It's magnetized. Alright, you get a USB port in there, you can put your keys there. Good quality, this whole thing feels rubberized, very nice. Now, um, what are some of the things that I don't like? The door bins, this plastic bit, this bit here, the way it is molded, right? The shape you know is nice, but the inside edges, I don't think you can see from here, but the inside edges is very sharp. See, if I press my fingers now, right, I press it and I can show you. Can you see that? Yeah, it's, it's rather sharp. I don't appreciate that because uh, you might cut your hand. Okay, so from the front is my driving position. I am five foot eleven, as you can see. I'm left with uh, not a lot of room, and uh, even headroom is uh, I get like two and a half, three fingers of headroom left. So now, let me tell you this: even though this is a C segment car. I would say it is one of the smallest C segments around in terms of rear passenger room. But can you fit three adults? Yes, you can fit. Would it be extremely comfortable? No. Uh, is it anywhere near the Honda Civic? No, the Honda Civic is almost one size larger in terms of rear passenger. But certain people like more compact cars. All right, they don't like cars that are so big. Yeah. So you get a very nice quality cup holder with integrated in the armrest at the back here. Um, one thing I don't really appreciate is the way the back seats are sort of designed because first of all, I sit quite upright and um, if I don't raise this headrest up, 
I literally can't see because the way it is positioned is at the back of my neck. So, uh, yeah. But when you raise it, it, it protects you from whiplash. <coughs> Apologies. All right. Let's go to the boot. The boot is nicely sized. Uh, not the deepest in terms of length. Uh, there is a very large load lip, which uh, which is it's all right to me. But now that I look at it, right, there's a small size spare. Oh, is it a full size? No, it's not a full size spare. All right. Now that I look at it, I don't think you can put a large suitcase. Uh, vertically as in facing me so you see if, if you are able to put like that one two but ah uh, yeah the boot is not the largest yep all right you get some parcel shelf with the strings and all that and nothing much at the back here apart from that some hooks over here one two three yeah four and of course, you can drop the seats. Uh, if I drop the seats, see uh, this part is just a bit. okay. It doesn't fold flat, All right? Uh, quite an angle, I would say. See, all right. Uh, oops! How did this even happen? Uh, this thing got hanged. Oh, okay. All right. Nice and sporty at the back. Still looks sporty though, the car. Now for a quick drive. See me? No, this is not the first time I'm driving it. I've been driving it around. Very nice. Oh, safety systems. This car is epic. Uh, it has rear cross traffic monitoring system. So when a car is coming by from the left or right and you shift into reverse, it will let you know. But it doesn't tell you which side, but it just reminds you with a beep. All right. Now, how it drives. If you watch all my other videos, you would have known that I'm a big fan of Ford's handling because they handle really well. All their cars, handling is exceptional. Now, this new one has a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. And uh, if you don't want all these safety systems, you don't want the auto parking, rear cross traffic alert. If you don't want all this, right, this car is only 118,000. Think about it, 118,000 for a 180 horsepower hot hatch the old Honda Civic Type R the um, EK EK4 EK4 Type R that one has 180 horsepower the old Integra 180 horsepower right uh, Golf GTI is 211 so this car if you don't want all these safety systems you don't you put throw all this away you you pick the base spec 118,000 you get a hot hatch without all the uh, some people say unnecessary modern features right um, as a keen driver as a driving enthusiast who can't park a car themselves right so this car you can do parallel parking reverse parking and all that and in terms of the handling is exceptional exceptional it feels very natural uh, feels really good balance and um, the one thing I can tell now is the transmission is not the best top converter definitely not the best top converter but the brakes good ABS activated good brakes decent not the best but good enough all right the car does uh, sit on its side if you test drive this car you might feel that oh why the car suspension is very soft uh, is 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 it rolling well technically they they engineered that in for comfort for better handling and, um, 
and the engine is powerful. All right. So I like the drive, and um, it's rather fast. The transmission, when you are not in S, when you are in normal drive mode, right, it is slightly sluggish in terms of how power the power is delivered. In fact, the first day, as I was just cruising, cruising slowly, as I moderately accelerate, I hear the revs, but I don't feel the car going faster. I was like, hey, why is this torque converter making you feel like it's a CVT, you know? It, so um, there's a little bit of that at slow speeds, but as you power up the speeds and all that, for normal cruising driving, it's okay. Now it's a give and take thing. Back then they have a dual clutch, which is which shifts fast, responsive, you know. But we all know dual clutches are not as reliable as top converters. So it's a give and take thing. <coughs> At the end, uh, Ford decided to go back to normal top converters. That's how it is. But in terms of uh, this segment, top converter transmission, I would say the best has to be Mazda 3's Skyactiv transmission. It is really, really good. That transmission is excellent. All right. So power doesn't really pumps in, you know, at one go. I like the Germans when when you when when you when you bury the throttle. And then about 1,000, 6,000, 8 RPM, everything comes boosting up. This car doesn't. I think they tune it in a way that to balance fuel consumption, to balance between power delivery, they make the car feel like a big 2.4 or 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine in a small car. So that's how it feels. You, you need the revs, you will climb with it, but it definitely accelerates and performs like a larger naturally aspirated engine instead of a 1.5 litre engine where you'll be stressing the hell out of the revs and all that so that's how it is in terms of suspension if you can spot a Ford Fiesta behind the suspension isn't as good as the, the one in the Ford Fiesta of course the Fiesta has a shorter wheelbase and um, but overall it is still a good suspension however my instant thought about this Back then, European C segments can sell. The non-premium European C segments can sell because they always handle better than the than the Japanese counterpart. They are always sort of more solidly built. When you close their doors and all that, right? And you travel at high speeds, 130, 140, 150, 160, they are always stable on the highway. The Fords, Peugeots, Volkswagens, Renaults, all this, they always have that kind of behavior that makes people want to pay more for a European car, even if it is less reliable as the Japanese counterpart. However, now this is the biggest thing that, that has happened now. You look at the new Mazda 3, you look at the new Honda Civic, you know, even the new Accord, you know, the facelifted ones. What I kind of felt here is, oh, the Japanese, now, they have excellent interiors, they're handling, they have caught up in terms of handling and suspension pliancy. The new Civic is very pliant. Is, is comfortable and it can perform. Once the Japanese cracked this and place it into their cars, and all their cars are styled so nice now, and the fact that they are larger, their sizing is larger because they have they you they, they sort of uh, combine their USDM and JDM models now. So they are selling the same model. So you cannot you, you just cannot bring a tiny Civic to US and expect people to still buy it. So the question is this. When the non that when the mass market Japanese brands have doesn't lose out to the mass market European brands in terms of handling, in terms of solidity of build, in terms of high weight, high speed cruising, and then they carry with them the brand cachet of of reliability, of excellent after sale service, then this is where I think at this point is where the European mass market brands that they have to really, really think uh, how should they step up their games. You look at the premium brands, they have the brand perception, right? They are premium and they are there, you know. It's very hard even for Lexus to be mentioned in the same breath as a Mercedes-Benz in, in all over the world. People will be like, eh, they are slightly below, you know. But for mass market brands, they really, really have to give some really good thought on how 
uh, they gotta they gotta go further because once all Japanese car makers sort of handle and drives like that with turbocharged engines, you look at the Honda Civic, you just as a, as a consumer, you'll be hard pressed to even go back to your beloved brands, even if you've you've owned Fords or Peugeots and all that for generations. Uh, and then you look at uh, Volkswagen, how they go around this, they go slightly more premium now. And then they offer a lot of in-car technology where, where Ford is also doing it. But in terms of making the interior special, having touch points that are very, very high quality, making the car feel premium, Ford is nowhere near even Mazda or Volkswagen so far. And then you look at Peugeot, you check out new new Peugeot's interior, the new 3008, the new 208, you can tell, wow, they go all out premium in terms of their interior build. So Peugeot also realized this and I think they're they are doing, now all their new interiors, right, they look like concept cars. So this is something that mass market European, European brands really need to look at. So far, in terms of the Ford Focus, I mean, the, the high spec version, the 130 version, right, it's, it's a bargain in terms of yes, auto parking, blah blah, and all that. But you come to think about it, daily drive, you want a larger, more, more functional, more practical car. And of course, you can park yourself, but that is a nice to have thing, not a must have, right? Um, yeah. I think, I think that's how it is. It has, I mean, I applaud them for specking all this excellent stuff and keeping the price low. And um, But if, if you were to go for the base spec, Ford Focus, the base spec, which has the same engine and transmission without all the safety features, it has the, 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 the entry level specs and all that, but it still has the high quality dashboard and all that. And you get the excellent handling, the power, and the fun factor and the fact that you know that now it has a top converter gearbox is a lot more reliable so yeah that's my two cents right so i would say in a scoring chart the low spec i mean versus competition the low spec ford focus has a lot more selling point when compared to its competitor you have the low spec honda civic but it's a 1.8 naturally aspirated engine in no way the engine can outperform this so if you are a guy who likes to change your rims body kits you know stick all the red stripes and all that and then you go for uluyam drives and all that the base spec Ford focus is still a very compelling choice yep uh, if you support my videos i hope you can subscribe and please check out my uh, e-magazine which I, we work really really hard on it uh, it is the first e-magazine in the world where you do not need to download anything and you just browse on to evomalaysia.com and you can just read whatever you like and every single page is highly shareable on Facebook. Ah, and it works on mobile, desktop, laptop, tablet, everything. Thank you so much.